So many texts coming through in relation to the game yesterday and the number one pick, Jason Horn francis So it's been a bumpy start to his career, there's no doubt about that. Firstly, put contract talks on hold. Secondly, flew to Adelaide, which I didn't think was a big deal, but... Didn't let the club know. In this day and age, you should probably let the club know. You definitely should, particularly with COVID and all sorts of things. Then he... Drug testing as well, because... Correct. if, If you're not at home when they think you are, the club gets fined. Then he liked a post on uh, Channel Adam Cooney's Instagram That's account. It. That's about seven AFL. A fake Hashtag trade. Hashtag armchair experts <laughs> to get involved. <laughs> Between Zach Butters and him coming back to Port Adelaide, he liked that. And now, questions over his body language. This text, I have honestly never seen less interest in a player than watching the Hornet yesterday. He is out the door. North should take the trade, should, should have taken the trade before the draft. Uh, morning boys, I watched North Reserves last week and Jaden Stevenson could not get a kick or a touch. He gets promoted to the ones for yesterday's game, says Peter. Archie Perkins was criticised for telling interstate clubs to not draft him while Jason Horn Francis said all the right things at the draft time, but his actions suggest he does not want to be there. Um, what would your advice be? You've been in this situation. Eerily similar situation. Were you? I can't remember any... Um, visible signs of frustration from you though. Well, I was frustrated and underperforming in my first 15 or 15 to 20 games. So I was getting sort of five, six touches a game. Right. Um, I didn't have the tank to be able to run out a full game of AFL at that stage. So I was homesick. Uh, I was frustrated. We were losing. Mm. Um, my body language was pr- poor at times. There probably wasn't the media scrutiny around it, I think. And, and yesterday's solo game heightened that and it highlighted some of his efforts. But there, there was a couple of efforts where I sort of looked at him and I thought, well, he had he had one effort and then mm. a player either stepped around him and then that was it. And he was only he was within a metre or a metre and a half of, of the opposition, but the, the second effort wasn't there, the third effort wasn't there, and it looks really bad because he's basically just standing there stationary, uh, and watching the play unfold. And it did remind me a bit of myself mm. in my first year where the frustrations creep in. You st- I think there would be an element of doubt whether he's, he does belong at AFL level at the moment. And, and I certainly went through that in my first year of footy. So uh, there's a so he's immature. Mm. And I mm. was as well. When you come over, um, the people that get drafted to the, from their, in their home state and, and they're able to stay there and still see their family every night after training, go home when, you, when you're knackered, it, you can't put a price on that. When you're young, you're 18, just finish school, and then you get thrown to the wolves. Mm. And, and I struggled a lot in my first year with it, and I've no doubt he's going through the same thing. I wanted to go home. Did you? A number of times. Do you have offers to go home? Uh, there's always just a couple Interest. of... Yeah. yeah. Well, the conversations are always there between um, the recruiters mm. and, and managers. So what uh, was the moment that it clicked for you? Was there one moment or was it a conversation you had with some senior players? Was it Peter Road pulling you aside? What, I think no, it, was, it was way past Peter Road's time that I still wanted to go home. Right. I, I think it was, it was just time and and settling into a new lifestyle. Mm. It was probably three, two to three years where I felt that I was at home in Melbourne and wanted to stay there. It obviously, it helped when Haley uh, moved from Adelaide and, and then we settled and started our life together mm. in Melbourne. That made it a thousand times easier. So if you get yourself a good partner that settles you down and then, um, it makes a lot of difference. So, do you, think, do you think he can, I mean, it's so early and um, made mistakes by sort of analysing players in their first year before, so I'm, I'm hesitant to do that. Do you think he's going to be the danger field type player? That, that That's the club has said. This is the club in the lead up to the draft said he has danger field qualities. Do you, do you think he's going to get to that level? I know it's a very early stage to make that call. Yeah, he'll be a superstar. You think so? Yeah. yeah. So what he's going through now is no different to a lot of draftees. Mm. And it doesn't matter if you're the most talented kid in the country. If you have those issues and you're not happy and you're homesick and you're frustrated. And you're playing in. And you're playing in a side who's getting belted every week. I mean, of of course, he doesn't know how to deal with everything just yet. I mean, he's, what is he, 11 games, 12 games Mm. into an AFL career. I've I've seen, we've seen attributes already Mm. and he's going to get stronger. He's going to get quicker. He's going to have, he's going to get more power in his game and he'll, he'll run defensively and he'll burst away on the other side of it offensively. So, I mean, all you need to see is a couple of snippets of, of what he can do at AFL level. I've no doubt. This is why 
it's a, a great reason for for at least first round draft picks to be able to, or clubs to be able to lock their players into three or four year deals to start with. So it it needs to happen because there are elements when you're 18, 19, and even 20 mm. of immaturity uh, and, so, and homesickness that you have to work through in your first few years before you mature and start to uh, feel at home at your footy club and start to want to play and, and love and get a love for your club so you don't want to leave. Does he need to, does he need to go down to the VFL? I mean, that we've, I, th- I think players have played so early now, perhaps before they're even ready, when that didn't happen in the day. And you look at De Koning from Geelong, like it's taken him a little bit of time to find his feet and they haven't been afraid to play him at the lo- lower level. Jamari Hugo Hagen's the same at the moment. But mainly now, if you are a top five player picked in the draft, probably top 10, you come in and play straight away when perhaps you're not ready. Now, physically, he is ready, but maybe mentally and from a maturity standpoint, he's not ready and is it benefiting his football to be put in this situation? I don't think it's doing him any good at the moment. There still needs to be a level of respect. Definitely. You can't you can't be walking away from a player the ilk of, of Todd Goldstein who is a legend at North Melbourne and is one of the hardest workers in the game and well-respected figure. You can't walk off from a conversation with one of your leaders mid-game. And that's a bad that's a bad look. He's as I said that that immaturity is still there. Every game he plays is a is a learning experience at the moment. So whether he goes back to the VFL uh, or not to learn, I got dropped twice. I think in my you in feel, my first you year, feel like and I, it was only one game, and then yeah. I was straight back in. But the the more I played senior footy uh, earlier, the better I was for it. I feel like they'd be treading on eggshells though. They'd be like, well, we don't want to drop him because that could be the straw that breaks the camel's back, and he might request a trade at the end. Of, that that that's how. You're treading so lightly around a first year player. Well, you you shouldn't be team sport. You should sure. have really been laying the law down to him earlier and not letting like st- you would th- this behaviour would have been on display throughout the preseason at stage. You've got no doubt about it through the practice games, and maybe they've let it just go on and no one has pulled it into line. So now the point is, everyone's treading on eggshells at the footy club around a player who's played ten games. It shouldn't shouldn't be that way and now they'd be too scared that he may request a trade home and if that's the case and if he doesn't want to be there as others have said Craig Hutchinson was big on this on footy classified if he doesn't want to be there trade him at the end of this year and cash in on the biggest deal that you can possibly get you're saying though he's going to be a superstar and can North afford with the situation that they're in first time ever I think they've had the first pick in the draft to lose him after one year I mean, no, surely you can't and, and he uh, he can't request a trade after one year mm. I mean, mm. who are the people mm. around him that are, that are talking to him? His family should be giving him the same advice. Well, Gunston, Listen, mate, Gunston was after two, I think, wasn't it? Well, whether Lever or Lever was three. Yeah, no, no. Mum, mum and dad, whether, whether or not you, you miss your, your son, he's been given the opportunity by North Melbourne. You put you your reckon name... Jack Gunston re- regrets leaving Adelaide? <laughs> yeah, well, like... Probably not, yeah. no. <laughs> but I just think it's... He's North... He, you, don't put your name in the draft then. Yeah, put well, your, put do an Archie Perkins. You got no choice. Say, Look, you got I, no choice, as you know. Like Nathan you, jo- Nathan Jones is recruited. You can to, put a price on your head, can't you? Tom Scully's recruited to Melbourne at the wrong time. Like it's just you don't. One, one year though, nah, you can't. You've got to stick it out. Relating to the AFL's most famous player, probably. Yeah, well, I feel uh, empathetic towards his situation that he's been thrown mm. into. Uh, he's the, the Dustin Martin type. Everywhere he goes, he's mobbed by people. So and that's a hard thing to deal with. And he's had mental health issues before he got drafted uh, leading in and, and also throughout his AFL career. So unfortunately, he, he slipped up in that way. And that's how he, he found his, his outlet with those uh, illicit substances mm. and has put his hand up and said, look, it was a mistake. I was in a bad place. So uh, whilst we don't condone what he did, you you have to feel a level of empathy for him because he would not in his wildest dreams have thought when he got drafted that he would be the biggest name in the AFL. Mm, mm, so, mm. and a lot of it is he's built that brand himself and he's cashing in on it with big endorsement deals. So, I mean, there's an element of responsibility you have to take with that, but, um, and he's come out and said, look, no one's perfect. Yeah. And he's made, um, mistakes and it is due to those issues that he suffered from uh, a long time. So look, I, f- I feel sorry for him, but, um, let's hope it's a bit of a wake-up call for him. Now. Yeah, it could be 
it could be the making of him and it could really could save his life really i mean that that sounds a bit dramatic but um there, there's been others that have continued on that road and it um, clearly hasn't ended well and and we know the name so to, to hopefully get on top of it at a young age could really save his life um and yeah there, there's a level of empathy i admire the way that he has handled it since like the statement that he released soon after the images came out i think it was on saturday in the herald sun was was perfect like own it admit to what you've done there was no vagueness around it and then to front up and actually speak about it um so i've got a lot of respect for the way that he's handled it yeah. as you said not condoning it um and i mean he, he was stupid and naive and immature well that's the thing is the immaturity it was i mean in, in a was room in, full of people it was embarrassing uh, yeah. and um so there's not there's no getting away from that and for someone who's been so um you know on the front foot about how professional he is squeaky clean yeah like of. weighing his food and, and things like that to then damage your brand like that was, Wasn't just was significant. Food, was so it? there's, there's look, there's there's criticisms there, um, but I think we're um, willing to forgive um, in this instance. Yes, we are. Jacob is in Broad Meadows. You're a North supporter, Jacob. Welcome to you, my friend. Yeah, how you going, man? We're good. What do you what do you make of the drama surrounding North and in particular Jason Horn Francis? Oh, I just reckon he needs a bit more time at North, and sometimes when you're in your first year, it just takes a while to get in the shape of things, sort of like Boomer Harvey when he started. Mm. So you don't, you you want to see him stick around? Yeah, of course. I reckon he'll be really good for our team. Yeah, no, I think I think you're probably right. I think most North supporters would be of the similar view. It's just interesting, though, isn't it, because of the massive offers that were headed their way? How many first rounders was it? Well, they get up to seven. <laughs> Well, essentially, if you look it at two it, or three, North, so essentially, if you look at the Adelaide deal, North could have had Joshua Shelley and this year's pick, I think it was, which is going to be four or five. Mm. And then there was, and there was another pick involved, another but I think one. it was, was another, yeah, there was another, well. there was another first pick, but then it was sort of essentially canceled out. Cause I think it was Melbourne's second back. So yeah. Not a not a massive upgrade. So this this he's eighteen. He's he's a kid. He's making some errors at the moment, and there's been a few. I think Sammy's compiling a list for after nine that he's mm. going to run through. So mm. there has there has been a few in his first year, but when he's twenty one, twenty two. He'll be a completely different player and a completely different person. Mm. So I've got no doubt, and I've got no. Uh, issues or worries that he's not going to turn out to be the player that we think because of some of these juvenile things that are happening at the moment. I, like he'll st- stamp that out of his game. You think if he's 21 or 22, he, he's going to have the shoulders slumped and, and having one or no, but one he, effort I, I, instead of two I, or three? I'm not concerned about that. I'm not concerned about his future. I'm concerned for North that he pulls the pin and says, I've had enough. So, yeah, okay. So, that's so you're I, not worried about his behaviour at I, all? I'm not worried about his long-term future in the game, the player that he's going to be. I'm concerned for North Melbourne that this is he's so frustrated with the state of the club. We've already had you know, David Noble being criticised from the players for speaking too hard. We've mentioned all the things that have happened in relation to Horn Francis already. He might just pull. He might want to pull the pin and head to Adelaide or, or Port Adelaide to have a bit more success. Oh, instantly. there it is. Oh, there well, it is. No, now no, we've got well, to well, it. But no, Port but I, Adelaide, but right. once again, the hidden agenda. What, Finally, what, it's come what through. What North are going to get? Are going to want is Butters in a top ten pick? Would I do that deal? Probably not. So that, that's the. Yeah. That, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do Butters in a top ten pick for him. No. So that's that's going to be the hard part. I've got sympathy for Horn Francis because I look at the stat sheet yesterday and it can whatever you can tell. I think Port would do that deal. You reckon? I don't know. I don't think they would. Um, Greenwood eight touches. Now they got Hugh Greenwood in as that mature player to support the younger midfield and yep. and sort of drive standards and He's underperformed. do a lot of heavy lifting. Now he had two touches in the first half. Um, Jaden Stevenson. Zebel had six as the skipper. Now. Ball doesn't come down there a lot and no. forced to move him in all sorts of different places. But honestly, if I put you out on an AFL field, Coons, right now, you'd touch the ball more than six times. Yeah. And he's, not not in the forward pocket. And he's, he's at North skipper. Melbourne. I probably would have made uh, maybe yeah five. Give me five in the forward pocket for North yesterday. Playing at half back, I would have got my twenty. Uh, yeah, as you, you've mentioned a few times. You do. <laughs> You would have. So, I mean, and there's there's many others of their senior players who just don't touch the footy. You mentioned Stevenson didn't touch it in the first 
quarter and had two at half time. They wait too long to five for the game. Inject those guys into the midfield to try and get their hands on it. Like, I think it was at the third quarter when Jaden Stevenson went up around hunting the footy. What and got two touches for the quarter. Yeah. I can't I can't cop the fact that these senior players are running around doing absolutely nothing and you're reliant on a 10-game player to to do the heavy lifting in there and now we're criticising him for being frustrated. Billy's in Ascot Vale. What's your view on Jason Horn francis Bill? Yeah, morning, guys. You know, just wondering your opinion, guys, of playing back in the day. Um, he reminds me of a Nathan Buckley when he first came on the scene. Sort of Buck sort of had that mentality and desire and eagerness too. So I think, you know, he's a, he's a jet of a player. I think to be a super player, but it just reminds me so much of um, a, a young Nathan Buck to come off of the state first night. Mm. I'm not sure whether Bucks would have given up, that, 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 and that's the worst thing that you can uh, be accused of. So he gave up yesterday. So your Horn Francis gave up, and whether it was one contest, whether it was two, if you critically analyse his performance, there were stages where he didn't try. Now, that's the worst thing that you can be criticised for as a player. Yeah. Now, well, you mentioned Jack Gunston before. Yeah. Do you think he... Uh, regrets leaving. What about Nathan Buckley? Left just before I, the, yeah, the I don't, dynasty. I don't, I'm sure, I'm, I'm certain Nathan Buckley would have spoken about that before, whether he regrets it or not. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a sliding doors moment for the young man. There's no doubt about yeah. it. Um, I wanted to touch on, just quickly launched a vicious volcano yesterday, Coons. Look out. On the Gold Coast Suns for the trade involving Lockie Weller. Now, no... Oh, you, you mean poor Lockie Weller who's nothing, just done his ACL a against, week ago? Nothing against Lockie Weller. It's Kick him out when he's down. Take the player out of it, but... But you're talking A- about Lockie at Weller. At the time, the AFL should have stepped in <laughs> oh, and can't, and not allow them to do that. We're all saying it. This is 2017. Gold Coast give Fremantle pick two for Lockie Weller, and they paid him a stack to go there, and they gave him pick two. It was a revolving door at the Suns at that stage. And fr- yeah, I understand that. But now, add Angus Brayshaw, um, sorry, Andrew Brayshaw into Gold Coast midfield now and how they're looking. Like, the AFL at the time should have overridden that deal. And we're all saying it. We're doing trade radio. This isn't, this isn't in hindsight. And now they have potentially traded away the 2022 Brownlow medalist. <laughs> He's leading the coaches' votes. One of the He's 22. Hindsight. It's not hindsight at all. Go, I'll find you. I'll find you a million um, comments about what yeah, we said at the, the time. The, the position that the Gold Coast Suns were in at that stage, they couldn't keep a player to save their lives, and they've got this so let's just potential pay, star let's who pay, wants to come back to the Gold Coast. The, the first one in history in the, of their club that wants to actually go two. there. Pick so two. They said we're just going to give up anything to try and get him. Pick two and an eight hundred grand a year for. For the the twenty twenty two potential brand loan, probably medalist. fifty grand over. Oh my goodness! How could you have? <laughs> Maybe two or three. You, how high. could you have done that deal? It's an absolute nightmare. One three hundred seven three six. That began the turning phase of the oh, Gold Coast think, Suns. You think that, that was, was the ins- beginning of it? You think that was instrumental? Yep. In the him going there oh. showed that there is a place to be desired. <sighs> This text said Kane <laughs> Brayshaw probably would have left like everyone else as well yeah, at well, the time. That's probably true. He'd uh, probably be playing with his brother at Melbourne and won the flag last year, Andy. 